Snakes on a Plane, a short story I'd like to share with you. The spaceship's pool and forest dome felt so real it didn't seem like they were traveling through unknown space. The barnyard, heavyset Patty turned to leave. Nervously, the 35-year-old wiped her hands on her pants legs. Wait, Ron, who was a thin ex-Catholic priest, stopped. His glasses slid down his long nose. I think I heard something. Do we sense anything? The 55-year-old looked down at the three-foot-tall round droid. Negative, Dewey replied. Oh, come on. Good-looking Doug looked down at the gold droid with three-pronged arms. You must see something. Do not contain sight sensors. Advise caution. Environment changing. Dewey spun around. No kidding. It's freezing in here. With facelifts, Judy didn't look like she was in her 50s. She rubbed her arms nervously. In his 40s, Doug propped his pistol up. Patty had her gun stuck in her belt in the back of her pants. Slowly, they made their way around the large room. They stepped over a two-foot wide creek that wound its way around the room. The waterfall was the only noise, and the water trickled over some rocks that landed in the pool that looked like a pond. It was beautiful greens and blue. And Judy gulped and grabbed Ron's belt from behind. She was scared. There's something in here. I sense it. Dewey, can't you detect anything? She looked down at him. Now I do. Dewey's head jerked around. Small alien creature. Small? Doug gulped hard and turned around. They all squinted around, looking around. The whole place was with bushes and green grass. Everything was silent, except for some a slight breeze. They all squinted, looking around. They backed towards the pool, up on the rocks. And then the snake was near Judy's feet. Seeing it, Patty looked down at it. Look out! Patty grabbed Judy back, and they both stumbled back into the deep end of the swimming pool. Ron and Doug turned startled and didn't see anything. The green six-foot snake was hard to see in the tall green grass. Judy and Patty popped up out of the pool, gasping for air. Sorry, Patty gulped hard. Shit, she looked down in the water. I dropped the gun. Patty started to pull herself out of the pool, and Ron helped Judy out. Doug thought he heard something and turned and looked down at Dewey. Patty pulled herself out on her stomach when the long, thick snake quickly slithered to Patty and wrapped itself around her. Patty screamed in pain as a sn snake squeezed her tight around her ribs. Doug turned and saw it. He wanted to shoot, but didn't dare. They were all stunned as Patty clawed at Judy for help. The snake's muscles squeezed even tighter, pulling Patty back down into the deep water. Judy grabbed out for her trying to hang on. Oh my God, what is it? Ron exclaimed. Jumping in the water, Doug and Ron tried to pull the snake off. Jesus, Doug gritted his teeth hard. Feels like iron. He tried to pull the slippery and snake, sticky snake off Patty. Patty gasped as the snake was crushing her and pulled her down back into the water, down to the bottom, and Judy tried to hang on to her. Judy! Patty's scared eyes stared at her. Blood spurted out of her mouth as she felt her ribs crack. I just wanted to love you. <clears throat> Tensing, all her ribs were cracking. I love you. She couldn't breathe. And Judy's breathing was also hard and fast as she tried to hang on to Patty. But Judy was pulled down into the pool with Doug and Ron as well. They tried to pull it off, but it kept squeezing tighter. It pulled them all under to the bottom, <clears throat> about 10 feet down. Oh, God, no, Ron gasped as he sunk out of water. Blood spurted out of Patty's mouth when the snake's mouth opened, displaying two-inch fangs. It bit into Patty's chest, spitting its venom into her. Patty's body shuddered and went limp. She was dead. The snake re released its grip and zipped away out of the pool. Doug, Judy, and Ron came up gasping in stunned shock. They all were trembling in fear and stared at each other, not believing what had just happened. And then Judy sank under the water and pulled Patty's body up out of the water. Oh, God, no. Judy hugged her body. And Don and Ron pulled Judy with Pat to the shallow end of the pool. And Ron pried Judy loose from Patty, and Dog picked Patty up. Doug walked up the stone steps, and Dewey stood by watching. I will carry her, Doug, Dewey offered. No, I've got her. In the library, and in shock, Doug laid Patty's body on the floor next to a 10-year-old Johnny's dead body. 
crying, his sister Maggie was in his mother Anne's arms, and Anne's husband Victor was clutching his 12-year-old son Pete from behind. Kathy was in her late 30s. She had her son Bobby, who was 16. He was wiping his nose on his sleeve. And a drunk Kathy was attractive, despite puffy, uh, puffy bloodshot eyes. And with pursed lips, Judy was fighting to keep from crying. And Ron took her in his arms. It was clear that they were lovers. She saved my life, Judy's voice was hoarse. Sighing, Kevin had his hands on his hips as he looked around the room. You should have brought them in here. Help us, Kevin, please, attractive Stephanie pleaded. Nate, her husband, was behind her, and she was rubbing her arms, feeling cold. Victor watched Nate, wishing he was in Nate's position, her husband. He was jealous and didn't want Nate near her, and didn't think that he deserved Stephanie, because Stephanie and Victor were having an affair. What are we supposed to do now? With his head down, Bobby clutched himself and Doug stepped to the woman he loved, Kathy, as she plopped down in a comfortable big chair. We fight him, Nate stood up straight, and Doug looked at Kevin. Why didn't the computer detect them? There must be two of them, Ron concluded. Samtron, Kevin called, looking up and around. Are there any aliens on board? He was a good-looking, sensitive, aware, in his mid-forties. There must be two of them. Ron concluded. The deep voice was monotone. Insufficient data. Alien composition unknown. Oh, great. Doug was sarcastic. Do you detect anything? Negative. Doug asked. Doubting what they saw, Kevin sighed, shaking his head. We have to stop them. Victor wanted to do something to protect his family. The lasers on the shuttle. Can't we disassemble them and use them on the aliens? Nate inquired, watching Kevin. Kevin shook her his head. You don't understand. You can't fight them. It's not real. He was the captain and owner of the spaceship. And Judy turned to him. That's that's real. She pointed down to Patty and Johnny's dead bodies. Patty, Johnny, reality is only what you believe it to be real. Fighting isn't the answer. The calm, good-looking, smooth leader was in his 40s. It is for me, Nate's jaw clenched as he gripped the rifle. Doug, you with me? Victor, Ron, Bobby? Please help us, Kevin. Stephanie pleaded with tears in her uh, deep-set blue eyes. You won't defeat them until you reach beyond her fears, he told them. What? Ron was blinking confused. It's matter of belief, Kevin tried to explain. That's all. He shook his messy short hair. It's not real. And Ron kept staring at Kevin, remembering. Now I remember. Judy nodded in agreement. He's K a star. You're not an alien. You're just human, just like us. Nate, Kathy, Doug, Stephanie, Bob, Bobby, Victor, Ron, and Anne turned to Judy in confusion, and Kevin felt all the eyes then turn on him, making him feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it was in the 1990s. He tried to spread his gospel that reality isn't real, that it's all in your mind. He's a maverick, a rogue, Judy explained. It is all in your mind. That's the only reality. Everything that's real has to be a thought first. If you believe it's not real, then it isn't. Kevin kept his stare on Judy. Oh my God, Stephanie's shoulders sunk down, and so did she. And Nate had to catch her and hold her up. Stephanie couldn't stop her trembling and fast breathing. Fanatics were after him, but he disappeared almost 20 years ago. Judy offered, I thought you were older than me. I am, Kevin was confident. But, 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 Bobby started confused. You're human, Doug stated. We've been had. Nate was sure. Stephanie's mouth and eyes were wide open in surprise. But how, how you can, she didn't know how to express herself. The things you can do, Anne was, watched Kevin. We're in trouble. Kathy sunk further down in her chair. What happened to you? Ron felt his chest as he watched Kevin. I unlocked the secrets of the mind. I use my mind, 100% of it. I learned to use its powers. Worried, they all backed away from Kevin, wondering what he would do. The spaceship, Doug shrugged, looking around the room. The droids, Victor chimed in. Samtra on the computer. Stephanie wanted to know more. My thoughts first, my world. You're in my world, my reality. I believe it to be real. Or maybe it's my dream. Puzzled, they all stepped back 
away from Kevin. You're only alive in my thoughts. I want to go home, Mama, Maggie cried in her, with her face against Anne's chest. She was sitting in one of the big chairs. I'm not a dream, Nate got angry, and Kevin turned at him quickly. How do you know? That rifle was somebody's thoughts before it became real. If it's a dream, get us out of here. Judy folded her hands in prayer, and Ron was clutching her hands from behind. I didn't see any snakes. They aren't real, Kevin insisted. Patty and Johnny are dead because of them, Doug pointed down at them at his feet. You son of a bitch, you tricked us, Nate tensed and pouted with furrowed brows straight on Kevin. You wanted it. I didn't have to do much to convince you all, Kevin defended himself. Or did you brainwash us, Victor wondered, and Kevin turned to him. The power of the mind is limit unlimited. You people do limit yourselves. You're also restricted. That's why I left. I took the limits off my mind. And since I did, I can read your minds. His eyes were on Victor. You didn't tell Anne, did you? That you were let go, fired because you were having an affair with your boss's wife. Always trying to prove your manhood. What? Anna Stephanie said in unison. Stephanie and Anne turned to Victor, waiting for him to reply, staring at Kevin. Victor stepped back. Then you led me on. Stephanie was worried and clutched her stomach because she thought she was pregnant with his baby. Nate was watching her, confused. What are you talking about? Stephanie felt Nate's hard, questioning eyes on her. Breathing hard, Victor's fist clenched as he stared at Kevin. You son of a bitch. He wanted to strangle Kevin, and he felt Anne's eyes on him. Victor, say it's not true. Anne's voice cracked as tears swelled into her brown eyes. She shook her head in disbelief that Victor lied to her. My God, Kevin. Ron wiped his hands through his wavy, thick hair. It was almost pure white. What have you done to us? You did to yourselves, Kevin looked around at each of them. Shaking their heads in disbelief, Bobby and Doug stumbled back against the bookshelves. Kathy covered her face with her hands. Judy kept her hands in prayer. You're quite a persuader, aren't you? Promising Eden, Utopia. I did not, Kevin shook his head. I promised you a new world, that's all. Kathy laid her head back on the cushy chair. We're going to die in space, she whined. The children, Anne had tears in her eyes. You can't do this to the children. They're in danger. we got to get out of here. Danger? Die? Kevin was defiant and shook his head. Daddy, Pete turned and looked up at him. I'm scared. And Victor hugged Pete while staring at Kevin. You're crazy. Really crazy. Why do you put limits on yourself? You have the same power too as I do. You can do the same things as I do. It's a matter of believing what you want to be real, Kevin had tried to insist. Fuck you, Nate was furious with Kevin. Let's go get him. He clutched the rifle and started out. The reality is there, Doug pointed down at Johnny and Patty. But Kevin was shaking his head and pointed to Doug's head. The reality is there, he insisted. Then he turned to Nate in the doorway. If you shoot, you must believe it's dead or you won't defeat them. You believe in your own existence, not existence, not theirs. Shaking his head, Nate turned to Kevin, peering at him. Your fear and anger will only make them fight harder, Kevin insisted. What are you talking about? Kathy shook her head, biting her lower lip and rubbing her dry mouth. Kevin turned to Ron. You must believe in your existence, nothing else. He was sure. Belief is everything. Resist and you will lose. Ron's eyes lighted up, understanding what he said. And knew it was right. You're damn right I'm going to resist, Nate gulped, holding on to his confidence and anger. They ain't taking me without a fight. There's no need to fight, Kevin got impatient. You saw what they did, Doug was concerned for Patty and Johnny, and it takes two to fight. There's no fight if you're not there. Kevin tried to explain. What are you talking about? Bobby rubbed his arms trying to shake off his goosebumps. And Kevin sighed and turned to Victor. All right, Victor, hit me. Come on, I know you want to. Victor was surprised and shook his head. Come on, I just spilled the beans about you. Anna and Stephanie know about you now. Irritated, Victor's jaw clenched and swung at Kevin, and Kevin quickly stepped back out of his reach. You weren't there. Doug nodded in agreement. No resistance. But how? The snakes. I don't believe in their existence, Kevin was confident. You weren't there. You didn't see what it did, Nate was sure. 
You can't believe everything you see. Sighing, Kevin got tired of their ignorance. The path of least resistance. Ron nodded understanding. Go with the flow. And slowly, Kevin turned to him and nodded. He was rubbing his chest. He had a stroke three years ago and still favored his chest by rubbing it. Maybe you can do it, Kevin, but we can't. Doug felt useless and didn't know what to do. Can't? Kevin got a set. There's no such word. She's right. He's right. Ron believed him. Looking down and sighing, Kathy covered her face, shaking her head. Then the light started to flicker and went dim, and they all jumped startled. Mommy, I want to wake up. Maggie sniffled, crying, hugging her. And Anne held on to her youngest daughter and kept staring at Victor. She couldn't believe what she had heard about him. Huey, Louie, get down to engineering. Check the circuits and mylon panels. Kevin ordered, looking down at them, and they left. Kathy jumped, trembling. Oh, God. The light started flickering again. Emergency life support, Samtron. Kevin looked up. Cannot comply, Samtron heard. Pyroton template and Zempro circuits broken. My God, they're intelligent? Judy wondered. Sabotage. Stephanie shivered in fear. Son of a bitch, Nate swore out loud. They all squinted with faint light around them. Near the bottom of the door was an air vent, and one of the snakes slithered in quickly and crawled across the floor, and Pete felt it and jumped back, bumping into his father. It's in here, Pete yelled. Nobody move, Kevin insisted. Their eyes rolled around, looking around. Kathy started crying and noticed a snake headed for her leg. It started up her leg, and she jumped with wide, terrified eyes. Quickly, Kevin grabbed her around the mouth to keep her from screaming and tried to hold her down. Kathy's breathing got faster in fear. And Kevin could feel her uh, trembling body. Don't move, he insisted. Everyone keep quiet. Everyone stiffened with their eyes looking all around. Another snake came from the top air vent near the ceiling. It slithered down towards Judy, leaning against the wall. Seeing it, Bobby jumped back, bumping into Stephanie and Nate. Close your eyes, Ron insisted. Don't look. They were all quiet. Kathy squirmed as the snake slowly slithered up her pants leg. Kevin had his hand over Kathy's mouth and the other hand on her shoulder. Stunned Doug just stared at Kathy and noticed the tears dripping down her smooth cheeks. With rifles in hand, Victor and Nate aimed at the snakes but didn't want to fire. Don't shoot. Don't do anything, Kevin ordered. Oh, God. Kathy yelped under Kevin's hand. She couldn't stop her shaking. Pete, Maggie, Anne, Judy, and Bobby couldn't stop trembling either. They were all scared to death. And Maggie, Anne held Maggie to her chest to hide her face. And Pete turned into Victor's arms, making him put his rifle down. And worried, Victor hugged him. Doug grabbed Bobby, holding him. And Nate stood his ground and kept his rifle at the snake. Nate, gulping, Doug shook his head at him. Then Judy felt a snake touching her shoulder. <gasps> With alarmed eyes, Ron grabbed her mouth and held her tight against the wall. They both stiffened and didn't move as the snake crawled down to Judy's shoulder. Ron saw the tears, her tears and gulp. Nate turned to them, aiming the rifle at the snake crawling down Judy. His fingers slowly squeezed the trigger. No, Nate! Stephanie slowly pulled his arm down. Instructions, Kay? Dewey inquired. Be quiet. Kevin insisted. Ron, believe, he nodded, watching Judy. Help her. Use your strength. I'm here for you, Judy. Ron's voice was soft and sincere. I love you. Stephanie and Nate were watching as the snake wrapped around Judy's arm, and Doug was watching Kathy crying. He and Bobby knelt near Kathy and clutched her arm and hand. Imagine, dream, visualize anything you want. Dream about something you love. Kevin looked around at everyone with their eyes closed. He had his hand over Kathy's eyes and clutched her shoulder. The snake was in Kathy's lap. Kathy, Doug knelt down there and clutched her hand. I'm here, and I love you. Do you hear me? Gulping, she nodded. I love you, too. Tears dripped down her cheeks, and she clutched his hand. Don't resist. Just exist. Kevin looked around at everyone with their eyes closed. Ron had one hand over Judy's eyes and her other, his other on her heart. I love you, Judy. We're together, and that's all that counts. Believe, believe. The snake crawled down Judy's waist and then circled behind her and down the back of her leg. She tensed and back against the wall. 
Stay focused on what you love. Kevin spoke calmly and slowly. Dreams and visions made the room become bright with light. The room exploded with different colors of light. Cocking her head, his head, Kevin's mouth and eyes widened in awe. The lights filled the room and became very intense. The two snake's heads reared up, circling around and waving back and forth. Their yellow eyes turned purple to red, to uh, white, and blue. Then the lights exploded along with the two snakes. Kathy and Judy jumped startled as the lights in the room were back to normal. Kathy jumped into Doug's arms and Bobby grabbed them both. Ron was hugging Judy and everyone looked around in surprise and awe. I'll never doubt faith again, Ron looked at Kevin. Maggie slowly looked up at him. You did it, Kevin. It was like magic. Turning to her, Kevin slowly smiled and winked at her. Magic is belief, and we all did it. Everyone was at a loss on what just happened and didn't know how to accept it or what to say. Kevin swatted next to Johnny, placed his hand on his forehead and the other on his heart. Anne was gasping, holding her mouth, as she stood up and saw him. Breathing deeply, Kevin closed his eyes, concentrating on Johnny's life force. There was silence, as everyone waited in anticipation. May I assist? Dewey turned to Kevin. No, please be quiet. Kevin snapped at him. And Anne stepped closer, watching and waiting in silence. Victor gulped silently, hoping she, he was alive. And a few minutes later, Johnny twitched. Anne gulped and stepped closer. Slowly, Johnny woke up, and Kevin wiped his face and slowly backed off as Anne grabbed Johnny in her arms. His breathing was fast and slow. What happened, Mommy? Johnny hugged her. Oh, my God. Judy covered her mouth in shock. She had been a nurse for over 30 years. Johnny's alive, Maggie exclaimed. You're okay, you're okay, Anne insisted. With wide eyes and an open mouth, Victor shook his head in disbelief. Johnny? Pete exclaimed, excited. Looking down at Patty, Kevin knelt beside her, placing his hands on her forehead and slow solar plexus. Closing his eyes, Kevin reached out to Patty's spirit. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Stephanie gulped and grabbed Nate's arm. She's not human. Bobby stared at, at him. Kevin. Kevin asked for silence. Dewey remarked. The room fell silent as Kevin concentrated on reaching Patty. Judy and Ron had their hands folded in prayer. Then Kevin's head shook negatively and he opened his eyes. He turned to the others, all looking up. Couldn't reach her. She's gone. Kevin looked at Judy. to Judy. Tears dripped down Judy's cheeks as Ron took her in his arms. I guess she didn't want to return to this life. Kevin commented, headed for the door. Breathing hard, he was exhausted and needed to regenerate. Kevin, you all right? Doug studied him. Tired. Just tired. Sighing. With his head down, he walked out. Thanks, you guys. They all looked around at each other. I don't believe it. Stephanie shook her head. I believe, Ron nodded. Systems functions are normal, Sam Tron was heard. What happened? Dewey spun around in circles. Experience does not compute. You can say that again. Doug started out the door with his arm around Kathy and Bobby. Experience does not compute. Dewey repeated, spinning around. If you enjoyed this story, there are more waiting for you over at my websites. So thanks for listening and have a great day. 23.